Last year alone, thieves stole 36 million rands worth of copper cable from Telcom. To stop the theft, Telcom set up a crack investigative unit. We took our, our, our resident experts in cable theft and said to them, you go away and you do whatever you have to to stop that cable theft. Thank you. This is Mike Kombrink and Johan van der Berg, both members of the new unit. KwaZulu Natal used to have the worst problem, but largely due to the efforts of this team, the situation is beginning to improve. We spent 24 hours with them. It's Wednesday night in Amanzim Toti on the south coast of KwaZulu Natal. Talcom has organized a special operation in the area. Working closely with the private security firm, the team responds to alarms triggered when the cable is cut. Sometimes these alarms merely mean that someone has tapped into a line illegally to make calls around the world. The cable alarm, uh, but it's not a cable theft as such. Uh, what we have here is that people were trying to steal lines uh, to run a scam uh, where they were trying to make international calls, illegal calls on people's lines. This time it was a phone tap affecting only one client. More often than not, an alarm means the line has been cut, which could leave an entire area without phones. The team operates irregular hours, one of the major reasons for their success. That's occur at night, and, uh, and that's when the crime is committed, and of course that's, that's why we've got to be there. This might be another lot, just hold on. Ready? Yes. Virlam 149, Charlie. Ruder Kranstu. All right, we're dispatching the guys. Thank you. Yeah, come down, come down. I'm here, but this after the shop, all right? Yeah, I got a 50 meter cut here. Where are you? Following tracks through the sugarcane in pitch darkness and rain is difficult and dangerous. Most thieves are armed. All too often, the team is shot at. See me like a vehicle was used there. Uh, pick up fresh tray tracks here, see? You see a cable drag mark? You see the dentures here? Look at this. And you see the tire track. Can you see that? Yeah, he went this way, see? He's gone down this way. Our team follows the security guard deep into the bush. It's pitch black and the cell phone signal is bad, making it almost impossible to contact the rest of the team waiting at the vehicles. After a long search, the security guard manages to find the cable and to make contact. There's about 100 meters here. This is 50 pay. Yes, sir. I'm right in the bushes. I pulled out up tracks uh, and I, I made a recovery already. Uh, right. Uh, did you see our vehicles parked in the road, sir? Um, did you see our vehicles parked in the road up Rudek Run? Hello? Hey, cut off again. It's the Syrians, man. And uh, you see the motors up Rundi, yeah? So they, they sort of, you can see the cut. It's very jagged. So it's, it, these are cheap crooks, you know what I mean? This thief has cut 500 meters of wire. If he sells it to a scrapyard, he'll make 900 rand. It'll cost Talcom 10 times that amount to repair the damage. Part of Mike and Johan's job is to try and recover the cable and catch the thieves. An even bigger challenge for them are the scrap metal dealers, some of whom provide a ready market for the stolen property. On our way to one of these dealers the next morning, we pass the crime scene. Talcom workers are already repairing the damage. Talcom sells all its scrap to only one nationally recognized dealer. All other Talcom cable that is bought or sold is illegal. Johan has been tipped off by a scrap metal dealer. He's expecting a customer to arrive with some stolen cable. Armed with a hidden camera, we're ready and waiting. When he arrives, we go in. This is the suspect, Ronnie Skippers. He's visibly nervous. 
When he realizes he's been caught, he decides to cooperate. Where did you get this coat? It's out of I chose this. He's been found with 14 kilograms of burnt wire. Most wire that is sold at scrapyards like this is burnt to remove the incriminating talco markings. Despite this, Johan and Mike can still identify it. Just when we are about to leave to follow up the information, another man comes to sell scrap. Mike decides to check his bag. Inside is more talcum property. Yeah, I don't like this camera. Much like copper wire, it's also illegal to sell Talcom's cable joints. The new man is also detained, along with our first suspect. Where did you burn this copper? This was really burnt. This was really burnt. They burned it and then they really burnt. Ronnie takes us to this place a few blocks away. He claims they were the ones who gave him the cable. The owners of this company are angry. They say that the cable was just stored there and that Ronnie knows exactly who brought it in. This is a fucking country, you know that? Stupid thing. You don't know what you mean, you don't know what you're doing. You come to a man's business, a man's business and implicate people. You're a fucking cunt, you know that? I know. If I was here that day and you told me, this man told you, that is fucking, I don't want that, take it away. And now you come and this is where you got it. Can I tell you something? Don't implicate an honest man's business. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? Take this man exactly where he needs to go. Exactly where we want to go turns out to be a suburb called Osterville in the south of Durban. There we find two men, Talib and Derry. While Ronnie sits in the car, Johan confronts them. He opened his van and he took out some copper, right? We did not know what was in there first. Then when he opened it and we saw it was copper. He said to say, uh, must burn it and sell it, right? He suggested to you that you must burn it and sell it. Sell it, right. So who burned it? I burned it. You burned it. OK, now you'll have to explain to me, where did you burn it? Where did you burn this cable? Then we had the back there. That's where most people burn the copper. Where did you get the cable from? Since Helium OK, the finishing. The man talking to you, Jerry. Hey, the guy gave it to me. I gave it away. That's it. Yeah. Who's the guy gave that gave it to you? I'm telling you, he gave You're me. telling me now that you are willing to, to, to be the last link in the chain. Let me get his name and... What's your name in the right name? Then his right name, Nikki. Nikki, what's his surname? I don't know his surname. I don't know his surname. In fact, they do know his surname. It's Ogle. Nikki Ogle. And it turns out he works for Telcom. Mike makes a few calls and we managed to trace him to the Talcom depot in Mobain. Before going in search of Nikki, we inspect the site where the cable was burnt to see if we can find more evidence. The area is run down and is clearly often used for illegal purposes. Many people turn out to watch. After this, it's off to find Nikki. First stop is his house. But it turns out he's at work. Finally, three hours later, we meet him. This is Nikki, the Talcom employee. You're out of your vehicle. You gave it to them. He told them Johan to puts the allegations to him. At first, he denies it all. Then Derek, the man who identified him, is brought in. Derek's statement is read. He took out a black bag containing some square pieces of talcum cables mm. and he left it there. Face to face with Nikki, Derek begins to backtrack on his original statement. 
Mm. I need you to come clear with me now, because I'm busy accusing this man of theft. I'm busy accusing this man of theft. Nikki is sent out of the room. Have you wasted my time all day? Derek goes off at the tangent, trying to confuse Johan. Tell us a story now from the beginning. When did you get the copper? Right from the beginning. Finally, Nikki is brought back into the room. Johan has had enough. It's late in the afternoon. He thinks it's better to let the cops decide who is telling the truth and who isn't. All three are taken to the Montclair police station. Ronnie, Derek and Nikki are all charged with theft or alternatively Section 36, possession of suspected stolen property. But this isn't the end of the day for Johan and Mike. There's another call way up on the north coast near Zimbali. Another suspect has been apprehended. This time, it's fiber optic cable that's been cut. The suspect denies any involvement. He claims he was just walking on the beach looking for crabs. But the two Talcom employees who arrested him tell a different story. It is rare for thieves to target fiber optic cable. Mostly, it's cut by mistake when the thief is trying to remove the copper cable next to it. As you can see, there's still dead copper in the ground. And at about half past one this afternoon, uh, the guy is busy trying to recover, or the thief's trying to, to recover this cable. And in the process, they, opti they damage the optic fiber. It costs Telcom more than 44,000 rand to repair the single break. In the last 24 hours, we've witnessed five suspects being booked and 500 meters of cable recovered. But this is only a drop in the ocean. Five men were caught red-handed with 42 bundles of stolen copper cables with thousands of rands at Beijing and Tata in the Eastern Cape this morning. Police are also following leads to establish whether more people are involved in a possible syndicate. The East Rand, Gauteng. To get a sense of who these copper thieves are, we managed to track down one of them. Let's call him Jacob. He lives in a township on the East Rand with a large family of 18. All of them are unemployed. Jacob has been stealing copper from Telcom since 1988. To me, it was non-violent crime. I can say to them, even if it's a crime, I can say thanks to them. Because my family have grown up by Telcom. We have that situation where, where the cable feeding a hospital goes down. Now all of a sudden, no one can dial into that hospital to get that emergency service. No one can dial out from that hospital to get other facilities organised for their patients. Um, we've had situations where a police station is, is off the air. Obviously, no one can get hold of those emergency services once again. I don't care to worry because there's no one who worries about me. The guy is actually stealing our copper is he's just an operator. He just has a need, he has a, a, a pressing need um, that says that this is my next plate of food. If I'm having 25 kg of a copper, I can feed them at about two months. Then after two months, I must make another plan to go there. To get the copper is simple. It's just to climb on that pole, you take the wire out, and then another one wire out, then you screw another one. If you want it all, you can screw all the poles. You take a, a bag, that black bag, you, put, you roll it first, then you put it inside. You come here at home, 
you take that rubber off because that rubber got numbers from telco. You take that that numbers out. When you take it out, there's an inside of it. It's a copper. Then you put it there. After spending hours cutting this wire, Jacob burns it to remove the telltale plastic coating. Then I'm cold straight. Where I'm selling it, it's near my location. When they see that thing, they're getting crazy. They won't ask you many questions. They just put it on a scale. And then they give you the paper for how many cages. Then you go and fetch your money. Jacob has agreed to let us accompany him when he goes to sell this copper to a scrapyard called Benoni Scrap Metals. We hook our journalist up with the spy camera. Posing as a friend of Jacob's, he asks if they'll get 1,000 rand for the cable. He's told he won't because it's Telcom cable. Clearly the dealer knows he's buying stolen property. Then the manager comes and tells our journalist not to smoke. He sees the bag. Then he goes inside to check with the Mulungu whether they can buy the goods. Finally, the big boss comes. He takes a good look at Jacob and our journalist and at the contents of the bag. This is Mr. Deploy, the owner of the yard. After this, the deal is done. The manager signs the receipt. We paid 126 rand and we leave. The following Monday, Mike accompanies us to the scrapyard to confront Mr. Deploy. My name is James and I'm from Special Assignment. Uh, I came here on Friday. You remember my talk to you? Yeah. Yeah, I came here on Friday. I bought, I mean, you bought some stuff from me, which you saw the stuff. And one of the stuff identified as a telecom uh, copper. And when was it? Friday? Yeah, it was Friday. What time? And it was about in the morning. And Everything was recorded, it's in tape. So I just want to double check with you that if you can maybe. It's when you come by the round about that, get the clock for the boss, eh? But I mean, the truth is, we are on camera the saying that. The but I mean, you bought the stuff from me. This the person have a look. Go on, Alan. The no, person have a look. Oh, even if you can give it, but the thing is, I came here and you, you, you wrote this receipt for me and I was paid here. They look through the receipt book. Finally, we look ourselves and find the correct receipt. We'd used the name David. David. Yeah, this is the right receipt. This is David. Is it? Yeah. And this is your signature. Yeah, deny it? No, don't deny it. Okay, it's your signature. Yeah. Okay. So just wait to miss the ploy, and you sort it out. Okay? It's a little bit cool. Now, where's all the other wires down there? After a while, the boss, Mr. Deploy, arrives. What's the problem? Hi, how are you? My name is Jay. My name is James. I'm from Special Assignment SNC. On Friday, I was here, to be honest with you. I brought some stuff here, which one of your colleagues, he have seen the stuff and he have identified as a telecom cropper and... You don't! But the truth is, they identified that... They assume it was, maybe. But you can't identify it. If it's burnt, you can't. But I mean, non camera, they mentioned that it's telephone. No, I mean, no, what do you want me to say? I wasn't there. I, I don't know what it's about, but I, I, now you're putting me in, into a corner now. Deploy is right. It's very difficult to identify precisely where the copper comes from 
once it's been burnt. This is an excuse that many dealers use. We've got to virtually catch the guy red-handed purchasing our copper that we or when we know it's our copper. We've got to catch him red-handed at that time. Once our cable had been bought by Benoni Scrap, it's more than likely that it was sold to a bigger scrap metal company. In South Africa, the entire industry is controlled by five or six large companies. They're the ones who process the scrap into pure copper. Because of the way the industry is structured, all scrap copper ends up at one of these companies. The copper that's stolen from our network ends up in huge organizations. They never get their hands dirty or they never get their hands anywhere near that actual action of stealing that copper out of the ground. Like all other scrap copper, our stolen cable must have ended up at one of these huge organizations. We wanted to know which one. Reclamation Group is one of these large companies. They deal in all sorts of recyclable material. We tried to ask them about our stolen cable. At first, they agreed. Then they changed their mind and refused to give us an interview. In a faxed reply, they stated that they did not buy stolen cable from Benoni Scrap Metal. They also said that their company does not buy any metal that they suspect is stolen. The person where the copper ends up, um, because, because of the structured, the structured system that that stolen copper goes through, will very seldom be arrested. But the, but the poor guy who's stealing that out of the ground in the morning, at two early hours of the morning or whenever during the day, he's the guy that gets targeted. The guy sitting in his, in his plush office somewhere who, where that copper eventually ends up, he never gets touched. Almost 70 million rands worth of copper wire is stolen each year and finds its way onto the market. Despite this, not one of these conglomerates has ever been successfully prosecuted. The Metal Recyclers Association um, are sensitive about the fact that there's this inference that we are the bad guys and that we, we are supporting an industry where anything that's stolen can be sold to us. Bernard Maguire is head of the Metal Recyclers Association, an association of scrap metal dealers. Members of this association deal with 85% of recyclable scrap metal in South Africa. We ask Bernard what the association does to prevent its members from buying stolen cable. We have a code of conduct, and in that code of conduct, which is applicable to all our members, no member will deal in the purchase or the sale of stolen goods. And on that basis, if any of our members are caught doing that, they will be expelled. To date, not one single company has ever been expelled from the association. Can you identify Telcom Corp? Yeah. Oh, no, it's one yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it different to other coppers? Yeah. That's this guy, he mean, said he can okay. identify the telecom okay. corp. Like you, you said, you are not... what I'm telling you. You are not here. That's what he said to me. But you're not listening what I'm telling but you. But these guys are professional that you have employed, and they agree that they can identify the telecom copper, which that's what they said to me. It was a telecom copper, which means they bought the stuff that they know. Sure. But they, I mean, he knows from the start that I mean you were buying the telecom call. Right. If right. that's what he said. Finish, what? Yeah. what? You are folks. I mean, you are. I mean, you are co-workers. You are that they were buying the telecom stuff. I mean, they said in front of you. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you over and over and over, and, and you're not listening. To me. Right, that's it.